Hello everyone, my name is Yin Zhenghao, and I'm a distributed storage engineer at Datanord. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation on the topic Chaos Engineering Testing and Analysis of XLine. This presentation aims to provide an overview of application and analysis of Jepson tests on a distributed KV store XLine. To begin, let's start with a brief introduction to Jepson. I'm sure some of you may already be familiar with it, and we will explore how do we apply Jepson tests to XLine. We will also dive into the testing results and analysis in our system. And finally, we'll discuss the lesson learned and future work of Chaos Engineering on XLine. Now, let's familiarize ourselves with the Jepson framework. As many of you may know, Jepson is a powerful library used in Chaos Engineering. A Jepson test is a closure program which uses the Jepson library to set up a distributed system, run a bunch of operations against that system, and verify that the history of those operations makes sense. Jepson consists of several components including a database for testing, a generator to generate operations, a model to check for correctness, and nemesis components for failure injection. I'm sure some of you are wondering how Jepson works exactly. Well, the most important part of Jepson is the checkers. Nosos is one of the checkers in Jepson that verifies if the operation histories are linearizable. On the other hand, L checks for transactional consistency or serializability. With these two combined, we can verify various types of databases that provide different consistency guarantees. In our testing, we specifically target strict serializability, which requires both linearizability and serializability attributes. If you take a look at the image, you can see that transactions not only appear in real-time order, but each transaction also reads the modification made by previous transactions. Now, let's talk about the Nemesis component. Nemesis offers fault injection capabilities allowing us to simulate real-world application scenarios. Jepson provides some built-in nemesis, such as pause, which will pause the current process, and kill, which will kill the process, and partition, which will partition the network among the nodes, and the clock nemesis will screw the system clock. Except for this, you can also write your own nemesis that tailored for your system. To give you a better understanding of how nemesis work, let's take a look at this video example of the partition nemesis. It can partition the cluster into a majority-minority paradigm. And it can also create a ring network that may result in multiple majorities if the system design is flawed. Now let's move on to the setup of Jepson for XLine. Before we do, let me provide you with some background information about XLine. Currently, XLine is a sandbox project of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, providing KV storage for metadata management. XLine uses the Curve consensus protocol, which is geo-distributed friendly. It also offers an SCD-compatible API. Similar to SCD, XLine provides strict serializable reads, writes, and transactions across the entire system, along with functions like watch and distributed logs. XLine provides an etcd compatible API. This allows us to reuse Jepson tests for etcd. And to improve performance, a native client is bundled with XLine. So what we need to implement are the DB part and the client part for Jepson XLine tests. Speaking of tests, let's discuss the ones we selected. 
we choose a few tests directly from the original SCT tests. The first one is the register test, which checks for linearizability. The second one is set, which checks for stale reads in transactions. Lastly, we have append, which checks for strict serializability. Most of these tests are based on a common operation called compare and set. Just like at CD, XLine relies on predicate-based semantics in transactions and a global revision for each mutative operation. Let me demonstrate an example of a predicate-based compare and set operation with the guard function in the append test. This function ensures that a key is not modified by the time of the transaction. As you can see, it first fetches the value of the key through a get operation, and then checks if the next modification revision of the value is the same as the current read revision. If the key is missing, the predicate will be that the next modification revision of the key will be less than the latest global revision observed by the previous get operation. Okay, let's move on to the analysis of the test results. Through the Jepson test, we observe two main categories of issues in XLine. The first category is asynchronous persistent issues, which are caused by XLine's original asynchronous I.O. design. The second category is revision generation issues, which is caused by the etcd compatible revision generation. To elaborate on the asynchronous issues, unlike etcd synchronized persistent approach, Exxon uses asynchronous methods to persistent log entries and KV storage, which introduce extra complexity. One issue we identified is that the read state implementation is incorrect because the committed operation and the index barrier trigger operation happened asynchronously, and we initially ignored the potential gap between them. Additionally, KV storage might be inconsistent with the logs due to the asynchronous persistence. Also, another problem is that one transaction might read different values for the same key, as other commands may be executed during the transaction, thereby violating atomic execution. The asynchronous I.O. introduced interleaving system states, making reasoning about them difficult. We found that synchronous I.O., despite having some performance overhead, is simpler and ensures correctness as a result, we decided to refactor XLine to use Synchronous I.O. Moving on to the second major category of issues, revision generation. XLine uses the curb consensus protocol, which leverages command commutativity to achieve one round trip consensus. On the other hand, etcd employs the raft protocol and execute the commands sequentially. Our goal was to implement an SCD compatible API for XLine while maintaining the one round trip performance. However, our analysis of the test revealed that this approach was not feasible. The CURB protocol allows for concurrent execution of commands if they commute. Similar to the FastPaxos approach, this is different from the state machine approach used by etcd, where commands are executed in a global order. In the Jepson append test, we expect strict serializable execution histories. However, curb itself does not guarantee a global order of all commands. This means that the commands do not execute in a serial order, resulting in transactions that do not follow linearizability, thus violating the strict serializability constraint. 
Now let's discuss the lesson we learned from debugging. When debugging a distributed system, understanding the event topology across multiple nodes can be challenging. However, based on my experience debugging XLine, I would like to share some tips with you. Firstly, logs are crucial for debugging a distributed multi-node system. Make sure they provide identical information for tracing purpose. Avoid unnecessary messages and especially avoid logging large objects, which will generate a huge amount of noise, making the debugging even harder. Starting to debug from small samples is also important. Begin with a small, easy to understand sample. As you can see from the Jepson test result examples, the upper graph is challenging to understand but the bottom one looks much more clear for humans. Sometimes it may require running the test multiple times to find a suitable sample. Lastly, if you're developing a distributed system, I strongly recommend integrating chaos engineering methods early on. Humans are not good at analyzing complex systems and traditional tests often lack sufficient coverage. By incorporating chaos testing, you can significantly increase test coverage and uncover bugs that may not be reviewed in traditional tests. For the final part, let's discuss the future work we have planned for chaos engineering. Analyzing logs can already be a tedious experience, especially when the need for additional tracing logs arises. In such cases, you often have to add the necessary code and essentially restart the entire debugging process. The non-deterministic nature of Jepson tests further adds to the debugging time. It becomes challenging to reason about the system state based solely on a single log file. To address this, we plan to migrate some of the Jepson features such as generators, checkers, and nemesis to MadSim. MadSim is a deterministic simulation framework. This will allow us to conduct Jepson-like tests while maintaining test determinism. It is expected to greatly improve debugging efficiency, as we can reproduce the same results deterministically. Additionally, integrating MadSim into our CI environment will be more convenient, as it runs locally on a single machine. Unlike Jepson, which requires running tests separately on multiple machines. That's all for today's presentation. I hope you find it helpful in understanding chaos testing and debugging distributed systems. For more information, please visit our website or feel free to reach out to us directly. Thank you.